Hey guys, I'm Daniel, and we are here with uh, Dira with her latest single, Back in Time. Congratulations, Dira. Thank you, Dan. And uh, here with us as well, connected to Los Angeles, we have Harvey Mason Jr. And what's up, Harvey? Yay, Harvey. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Dira. It's good to see you. Good you look good you. over there. You too, as always. <laughs> Congrats on the music. The single is out. Let's go. Yay. That's it. Congratulations. My goodness. So I'm just going to give a little bit of um, credentials with uh, with Harvey for all of you guys who doesn't know Harvey. Well, Harvey Mason Jr., the brilliance of Harvey, has produced works for many world-renowned singers from legends like Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson uh, to today's biggest names like Beyonce, Justin Bieber, Chris Brown, and many more. Harvey Mason Jr. has also reached out to Asia and collaborated for popular K-pop acts such as EXO, Red Velvet, and NCT. And today, with Indonesia's own Dira. Harvey is currently the CEO of the Recording Academy, the organization that holds the Grammy Award. So, man, we're very privileged and excited to have your time um, to talk with us. And, you know, I, I want to flash back. You know, let's go back in time, literally. <laughs> how, how did you first find out about Dira? And how, did you, how do you feel when the first time you heard her voice for the first well, time? We had some mutual friends who connected us and I was sent some music and I heard it and I was immediately impressed. And then we were talking a little bit back and forth about the possibility of working together on music. And of course, I love that idea because kind of throughout my career, I've really like I've been super, super excited and passionate about working with great singers and singers who are are interested in, in not just singing the same old way and doing the same thing everybody else is doing, but singing and really using their voice and really trying to tell stories with their voice. And so for me, the challenge with Dira, and it's the challenge that I, I have every time I go into the studio, and it's the goal that I have every time I go into the studio, and that's to try and make the singer give us, me the producer and you the audience, the best performance they've ever given. And so I think, and I hope that's what we did with Dira. Well, you didn't disappoint at all, right? Because we just had the uh, our press conference and the media here in Indonesia, they were mind blown. They were they were like, what? They, yeah, they, was, they were we pretty never, surprised. They, like. We never <laughs> heard that kind of data, you know? And um, how did you do it? How did you get it out? Was it like, you know, like how we see it in the movies where you started screaming mm -hmm. at Dira and like you get, you corner her and like she started crying yeah. and then suddenly the gold <laughs> came out. Like, how did you do it? That yeah. was exactly Yeah, it, that's man. exactly was, what happened. <laughs> you nailed it. We just fought and fought and I yelled and screamed. <laughs> No, you know, with Dira, it's every singer is different. But with Dira, she's got such a great voice. And she's also, as you can tell from hanging out with her, very friendly and kind and generous. And so there's a real collaboration. You know, we really had back and forth. I would suggest something. She would try it. She would suggest something. So to answer your question, the way we got it was just through hard work and collaboration and the talent of Dira. You know, my job as a producer is to try and uh, just coach or corral or bring together the talent of somebody like Dira and uh, hopefully I, I accomplished that from what you're saying. It seems like you're liking it. So maybe we did something, Dira. Oh, wow. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, the yeah. first time I heard like my own voice, you know, right. the recording, I was like, oh, this is me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Harvey, oh, well, obviously he's really good at what you know, right. what he's doing so he can like really bring out like the best version of yourself you know yeah like, yeah maybe you want to consider singing <laughs> <to Daniel. laughs> no, no 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 don't worry about it uh, <laughs> the world is still safe you know as long as i don't sing um but for for you like how did it feel for you like it seems like um you know harvey was pretty relaxed but maybe it wasn't for you no it wasn't for me uh, yeah right I, I mean you know i i watch whiplash you know so <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think Harvey also could tell that I was pretty shy uh, in the first place. But, you know, um, but Harvey and the whole team, they made me feel like really comfortable, you know. So mm -hmm. and then like starting from the second day on, it was, you know, it's a party. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, of course, I was that's nervous. Pretty, that's, <laughs> that's pretty normal, though. I, I think usually it takes a little bit of time to you know, get into a rhythm, find 
find what the the, the, the beats are going to be and, and really like the singer has to understand what the producer's like and the producer has to understand how to best work with the singer. So the first day is always like feeling each other out and then we get to know each other musically and then we kind of hopefully found, found a great groove. Because, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, like um, the pressure for you, I mean, knowing that Harvey produced yes. Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Justin Bieber, and like, and, and you were the first Indonesian that Harvey produced. How, you know, how did you, how did you, can, how were you able to be, to, to relax even? Um, like I said before, I mean, Harvey, I'm, he's such a sweet producer, you know, he, no, he was not yelling at me. Because he made me like, real, you know, he gave me like space right. and time to just to, you know, get in like the comfort. Of, right. Yeah. My comfort zone. And right. just to get along with everyone. Wow. And Yeah, so I think he made it like easy for me, even though it still it was a big <laughs> pressure. And I didn't know, I, I, I actually didn't know that you've never uh, worked with an Indonesian artist before, Harvey. You were my first, you were my first here, and I'm very happy about that. Mm. How, yeah, how was that, you know, um, your first Indonesian artist? It was amazing, and it couldn't have been anyone better than Dira. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I'm goofy. We have a great time. We laugh a lot. And yes, Dira yes. fits right in with the, kind of the way we work. We had a great time. Uh, but again, it really came down to Dira's voice and her talent and, and her music. And that's what excited me about the project. And that's why I was really thrilled to be able to get a chance to work with her. So let's let's now um, talk about the single "Back in Time." Yeah. Um, can you can you share with us like the the meaning behind the lyrics and um, and then we're probably gonna go more technical with Harvey. <laughs> but let's let's talk about the um, the song itself. Well, actually, during the um, the workshop, the songwriting session, mm -hmm. um, I was only thinking about you know how how sometimes we get like an occasional glimpse of the past yeah you know but we don't we're not really thinking of like going back to the past right but then after I we finished the, re, the recording and I listened to the song again somehow I can like relate it to my self transformation journey mm. like how you embrace and just celebrate um, your old self right. it's also part of your journey and it, what m what makes you the you are today right right so yeah it's kind of like the meaning kind of changed mm. for me mm. after i um heard the real recording right yeah. right and that's that's beautiful especially um it's about reflecting you know your like, your past self yeah. and yeah because um i i saw in the music video as well like you know um there there were two hands right yeah. one uh, one is like the bedazzled filled with, one, bedazzled with yeah. glitters and yeah. all and the other one is just like a simple yeah natural <laughs> natural yeah, hand yeah. right so um can you tell us a little bit about self. that <laughs> right right yeah well i've been um doing like a lot of um like uh, a journey inside mm. like the past three or four years mm. this past three or four years so Um, but we've also talked about that before yeah. together, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, I think um, now I have um, managed to discover my true self mm. like, without having to put on a lot of masks, you know, right. to right. become somebody else or to please others. Mm. And Harvey, when you produce it, was there any uh, interesting... Um, touch that you put in there uh, specifically for Dira? Yeah, I always try and make sure the music and the productions are very special and custom for all the artists. Uh, we wanted with this one to have enough musicality and melody so that she could showcase you know, her vo vocals and her singing ability, really important. So you don't want to do a song that's so easy and so simple and nursery rhyme that you don't get to really experience all of Dira. But you also don't want to have it be something that's so musical and so hard to comprehend as a listener that you lose track of it and it's not memorable and it's not you know something that you're going to want to stream over and over again so it's finding that balance and that's hopefully what we did here uh it's you know obviously the kind of song that 
hopefully you love and you love to sing along with, but also something where the lyrics mean something to you and the lyrics are something that you can you can relate to and they resonate with you as a listener. And that was done specifically with Dira in mind and, and with her help. I heard you're very picky in choosing who you're going to produce, right? Uh, especially uh, with the background as well that you have. And yet you pick Dira, right? And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. What is the, how do you say it? The X factor. <laughs> yeah, the X factor that you found in Dira that, that you, because it's your name on the line. And if, if you know, if, <laughs> if the song's like, oh my God, oh, what have I done? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're betting on, on Dira to actually make it. So I'm just wondering, like, um, you know, what prompted you to do it? Well, after we got a chance to talk, I really felt like she was a great artist to be able to work with. Uh, she had some history in the marketplace there. She had some popularity, but more importantly, she just seemed like a great artist. She seemed like somebody that uh, I would want to work with. Again, as I said before, the vocal ability, uh, the entire package of the visuals and, and the performance and, and the history. But really, I look at things that I want to work on is, are they going to be fun? Are they going to be satisfying? Are we going to create something cool and special? And just after talking to Deer, I knew that we would be able to do that. So uh, I don't put a ton, I don't like overanalyze every artist. I decide pretty quickly, do I like the artist? Do I like what they've done? Do I think we can do something great together? And will it be a fun time? Will it be a good experience? And if the answer is yes, then I jump into it. And that's what we did with Deer. Wow. Oh, thank wow. you so much, Harvey. I like that. That's, yeah, you're, you're, you don't overthink it. That's, that's amazing. Um, have you ever been to Indonesia, by the way? I have not. I'm no, hoping that you guys will invite to, me. Hello. We have to bring Hello. him over. Definitely, <laughs> you know, as soon as I can as be one of your background singers, dear, or I can play you know, tambourine on your tour. <laughs> yes, please. With a tambourine. With, I love that. With choreography, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have the media tonight as well. Um, they're joining, and um, we we've, we've picked some of the the questions that the media pick um, that the media is asking. And um, this is to Harvey, uh, since well, now we found out that you've never been to Indonesia, but I guess you have been to Korea, and you've been working with a lot of Korean artists. Um, I'm just. You know, as the president of uh, the Recording Academy, um, I'm just wondering, how did Korea make it worldwide, right? And is is there any any chance, um, you know, other countries, maybe in Southeast Asia, as specifically Indonesia, can make it as worldwide as Korea? I think it's a long answer, but I do think. The K-pop music has broken into the U.S. market because there's just a huge appetite for it here. There's the excitement of the groups and the artists and the way they shoot their videos. Uh, the type of music they make is not something that everybody in the U.S. was making at the time. So they had a had a little niche that they could get in. And they had a lot of fans here. Uh, we have quite a few people from Korea here in the States that started the momentum, but then you know, it's kind of taken over and, and everyone in the country is at least a large percentage of people in the country listen to or enjoy K-pop music. So as to if Indonesia can do it, I guess that'd be iPop music, right? I don't know. It's just comes down to the yeah. artist, it comes down to the artist and the music and how it's presented here in the States, um, how you're engaging with the fan base, how you're you know, how much time are you spending over here touring wise? And just, you have to make sure that it's music that the American audiences would enjoy and, and want to listen to. And I think that's really the trick for any music. You know, we're seeing a, a large uh, influx of you know, Latinx artists here in the U.S. A lot of times we don't even understand what the heck they're saying, but we're singing along in, in a foreign language. So it's definitely doable. Uh, and I don't think there's any market that is, uh, precluded from being popular here in the U.S. Mm. And that's really funny, though, because uh, as you said, right, um, they're they're singing, they're sticking with their Korean language, um, while a lot of uh, local artists they 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 sing in English 
try to make it global, right? So yeah, from from your point of view as well, like uh, you think, does is language important to break it globally, or is it more of the the music that can make it you know global? We don't care about the language of the lyrics. I think the language is important to some degree, but I think the music and the artists and the song is really what gets people interested and excited. The K-pop thing was interesting because they were doing a lot in Korean, but then they would use some English words in the choruses, and I think that made a difference. But with the music that we're coming, that's coming from you know, the Latinx artists, I don't really hear a lot of English in any of that, but I think that's also attributable to the fact that we have a lot of Spanish-speaking uh, people yeah. here in the U.S., so it's a little bit different. Um, yeah. So I think it's a mix, but a lot of it depends on the song, the artist, the video, uh, the singer. You know, there's so much that goes into it. So perhaps um, we should put um, some Bahasa Indonesia in our next recordings, Harvey. Yes, maybe. That might be it. <laughs> yeah, that That's might it. be it. It's, uh... <laughs> Selamat makan. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> Jangan buang sampah sembarangan. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry. That that means uh, don't throw your bin, uh, don't, don't throw your trash, uh, you know, anywhere. But anyway, it's an Indonesian saying. But um, I, yeah, and 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 I like what you did with uh, the single back in time because um, we know you know Dira specifically going to jazz. Uh, she's she's usually it's um, known for her jazz vocal, but in back in time she she's totally like changed her voice even right to R&B and that is more pop there is more mainstream and um, is, is that like a strategy from your side as well to make Dira to become more pop and uh, be received uh, in in the um, market globally I don't know if I would call it a strategy because I never want to try and change an artist into something that they're not. I think it was something that Deera and I talked about and she wanted to do something different and to evolve and go some new directions. And she has that in her. She grew up listening to a lot of this music. From our conversations, I knew she loved, you know, pop and R&B music. So it was just us having fun and making cool music together. And uh, our hope is that people like it, but it was never like, Oh, we've got to make music so that you can do this, or we got to make music that sounds like this. It's just like, let's make something cool, something that fits your voice, something that we really love, and something that I would want to listen to. A lot of times, that's how I'm making music. I'm kind of not trying to please everybody. I'm trying to make sure the artist is happy. I'm trying to make sure that when I'm done, it's something that I would want to drive around to in my car and, and listen to. So and that's definitely what I think we did. And you were jamming to my song. <laughs> Jam. I love that. And I, I love what, what you said. Like, you're not trying to please everybody. Um, you're you're just, tr you know, you just... Uh, you're just trying to make good music. Trying to make basically. good music. That's it. Yeah. yeah. How, how did you feel about, uh, about, about that? You know? Well, actually, to be honest, um, I was, you know, I was kind of nervous, mm -hmm. actually, in the, you know, uh, at the beginning because... Um, it's people, not your style. Yeah, people in Indonesia, they, you know, they always expect me for right. me to sing like all the big songs right. with big melodies, right. you know, with like very uh, wide range of melodies right. and all those high notes and belting, you mm, know, mm, <laughs> right? Mm, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, I mean, it's, I was pretty nervous. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, but now after I heard this song, it's like, wow, you know, yeah. it's, it's something different and hopefully people will like it too. Do, do you feel unfulfilled though? Like, no, like no, I, I, uh, I could do way better than that. No. I could do my belting. I could do my grande voice in here and there. Like, do, do you feel like, no, mm. I'm actually like pretty proud of myself that I can, um, explore like another side of Dira that yeah. not many people has heard of. That's true. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Harvey, like seeing the market today, do you think the market would prefer um, a simpler sing along and they could sing it in the karaoke um, or still they, they like, you know, the, 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 the big high notes with all the belting and head voice and whatnot? I think it goes back and forth, honestly. I know 
when I go to karaoke, a lot of the big belting songs are the ones people love to sing. You know, the Whitney Houston songs or old, yeah. you know, hair bands with the big, huge melodies. Uh, so I think it's it's a, it's a mix because I think you also want to have something that people can easily relate to and easily pick up. But there's a lot of that. There's so many songs that are really, really simple, and every day. Thousands and thousands of songs are coming out, so you have to have something that's going to differentiate you from everything else. So, I think a little bit of melody is important. I think a great vocal performance is important in giving something people that they can number one relate to, but also number two is is exciting and sounds uh, unique. It's got to be aspirational too. Everybody, if everybody can just sing it so easy, it's, there's nothing impressive or exciting about the artist doing it. So, I think it's a, a fine line that you have to try and um, balance on. Mm. Yeah, that's it. The balance. It's uh, it's always tricky to find a balance. I got I got another question from one of the media. Um, what message do you want to tell emerging and young musicians, especially in Indonesia, in pursuing their dream to become a well-known entertainer slash superstar? I would say it's very difficult, but the the the, the steps are hard hard work a ton of persistence a, a lot of dedication and passion if you love music and you have to be an artist and you're dying to do it then chase it if it's a hobby and it's something that you think you might want to do and you're not sure it's not going to work you have to dedicate yourself to it and you have to give it your all you have to give it everything and then the next step is to study I mean, it doesn't sound natural for a, a, an artist or a musician to tell them to study, but they have to go and look at the artists that have done it before them. Look at people that they want to emulate. Look at the people who accomplish things that they want to accomplish. Look where they've been. Look how they did it. Figure out the steps and be smart about it. And then the final thing is, is you have to be real and you have to be honest and be yourself because manufactured artists, artists that... Uh, sing things they don't believe in, sing things that they don't feel. Those type of artists, sometimes you can have a hit, but they don't last a long time. It's not a career, and you don't attract a loyal audience. The way to really build a career and be a superstar is to sing things that you feel from the heart and sing things that mean something to you and that are honest and that they feel authentic because the audiences can smell and sense when something's not honest and when it's not real and it's not coming from a good place from an artist. So uh, you really, as a new artist, have to find your sound, find out who you are, what's your story, what do you believe in, what do you stand for with your music, and try and pursue that lane. So a couple steps. It's not hard, it's not easy, though. It's a tough, tough road. Yeah. Wow, well, that's just a whole master class. <laughs> There, you <know. laughs> There you go. There you go. There you go. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I would like to ask from your own personal um, story. I mean, you obviously you didn't you didn't like just easily suddenly start working with Aretha Franklin or with the Houston. Right. Like, so there must be yeah. some some rejections before. Um, I mean, we live in, uh, I don't know, in a world where Internet make things easy nowadays you know like um, a lot of people a lot of the um, um, generation Z for example they feel like oh I'm gonna be the next Mark Zuckerberg oh, I'm gonna be the next uh, YouTube star it's so easy that the first sign of rejection they'll go like nope that's not for me and they go depressed right so I'm just wondering from your um, side and maybe you can share a little bit of your personal um, story and how you you finally able to break through to have Have your own breakthrough, breakthrough, and producing one of this legendary, uh, legendary artist. Yeah, well, that's why I said the first step is really the hard work and the persistence and the dedication because rejection is absolutely part of uh, coming into this business. It's a subjective art form, so there's no way to really measure it. You know, you can't say, uh, you know, one plus one equals two. It's like it's all up in the air, and you're making art that people are going to put their personal judgments on. So it's very difficult. And yes, you'll have a ton of failure. And I myself was told, you know, countless times that the music wasn't good enough, the songwriting wasn't good, the production wasn't good. So it's just really a matter of listening and learning. And that's why I say study, because when people told me I wasn't good enough, I took the time to look at other producers that I liked, look back in history of people that I respected and people that I wanted to emulate. 
and aspire to be. And I really listened and I studied and I read everything I could and I bought all their records. And then I practiced and I got better and I got better. And still people said, oh, you're not quite good enough. And I kept working. I was persistent, right? And things we talked about. Yeah. And finally, somebody believed in one of my songs and said, I really like that song. Let's record it on my artist. And then that encouragement and that tiny little sliver of success made me want to work harder and get better and study more and practice more. And I did the exact same thing that I tell new artists. I tried to find what was authentic to me. And that's why we said a little earlier in the, in the interview, like making music for yourself and not making music for everybody else. What is it going to be for Harvey that I like? What do I like to listen to? And make sure I'm making things that are pleasing to me. So those are the exact steps that I took, but it was a long journey. It was a rough, rough ride. And a lot of people did not believe in the music. So you have to believe in yourself. Wow, thank wow, you so much Harvey. for that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Who, who was it? Who was it who, who gave you who that slither first, of yeah. uh, success? Well, there were two things, and I kind of combined them in that story. But the first job I got was an A&R man, a guy named Guy Abrams at Motown Records. And I did a remix for an artist, a very small artist on Motown Records, and he paid me. That was my first professional paycheck. But shortly after that, I wrote a song for an artist, Brandy, and the artist that recorded the song and that was really my big break and i met a lot of other great producers a lot of great music executives and then being involved in the brandy record exposed me to a lot of other artists and that was kind of the tipping point for my career where people started slowly believing in the music and, and wanting more records produced by me wow wow <laughs> <laughs> I'm just speechless. There was there was such a, an beautiful, inspiring story. Beautiful. There was yeah. Um, thanks for that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, all right. There was a little bit of a back in time story uh, from Harvey. And what about what about your back in time story, Dira? Like um, the first time you you sing in front of a crowd in front of a crowd and the crowd actually applauds. <laughs> Um, when I was four years old. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> But no, um, I grew up listening to a lot of, you know, and I didn't know that until like two years ago mm -hmm. or three years ago that I listened a lot to um, music that actually Harvey produced, you know, yeah. From, yeah. from Brandy's album, right. Um, right. Tony Braxton, Britney Spears, yeah. you know, yeah. Justin Timberlake. So when people, like when the, the media asked me earlier, like, Why Harvey? Because you ask Harvey why, Dira, and, mm. uh, and the media asked me why uh, Harvey. Because I'm just a big fan of Harvey's and also all of his work. And to be able to work with the guy himself, you know, yeah. it's just yeah. I, I I've never dreamed about it before, Daniel. To be yeah. honest, yeah. but it's happening, and I'm really I'm truly thankful and grateful. Mm. And I'm also excited about, you know, a lot of things that we might do together again in the future. Right, Harvey? Amen to that. <laughs> Let's just Let's go. Let's do it. Let's seal it and deal it. Except this time we record in Indonesia. That's yes, it. Yes, please. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. You know, you have family here in Indonesia. Um, so what's next? What, what do you think will be good Uh, for Dira um, because you kind of put your magic and now she's singing R&B and <laughs> what genre do you think yeah, that I'm Dira should it. yeah <laughs> like uh, yeah what, what what do you think well I think it's going to have to come from her heart and come from her as to where she wants to go next but I think she's in a great direction now uh, I would love to see what happens with Back in Time and hopefully there's a desire for more music like that because I think she sounds great doing it. I think it's a natural and she's a great fit for that. So hopefully a lot more of this. I love yes, that. Yes, I agree. With I feel you. like I feel like you just open the Pandora's box to Dira, right? So now that that <laughs> it's it's out, so we'll see what's going to happen. <laughs> it's all it's all up to you, and uh, you know we'll, yeah. And what about you? What, what do you think? Are you comfortable with this genre? And yes, um, actually, um, we have worked on uh, 
three tracks together, right, Harvey? And yeah. I'm just <laughs> I'm just so excited for everybody to hear it. You three know. tracks? Yes. Already? <laughs> yes. I thought you were, okay, I didn't know about this. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, we're, you know, we're working towards that direction, mm. like um, a new sound for Dira. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be in your next album then? Hopefully, you know, hopefully that I would be able to complete the album with Harvey, of course. Mm. So when will Indonesia and the world finally be able to listen to the next two singles? Yeah, well, we're, we, we would like to see, you know, what happens with Back in Time because we, we are going to release it tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> It's not yeah. even out yet. So we'll see, you know, how it goes with Back in Time. Hopefully people like it and then mm. we can release our next song soon. Mm. Yeah. During this pandemic, it's kind of hard to travel and have a tour. Right. Um, what is the most effective way, you think, Harvey, um, for Dira to be able to promote her album globally well like you said it's so hard to get out and travel so it, it has to be done on social media it has to be done digitally through you know meetings and performances online trying to reach different audiences uh, and just communicating as often as frequently as possible with as many people as possible uh, you know it's a, it's a tough time to prom promote new music it's also really hard to Uh, make a pivot like this and change from what people know Dira to be into a new a new direction. So it will be a challenge, but I, I know Dira can do it if anyone can do it. Uh, but it's it just takes a lot of time and work, especially since you can't go out on the road and you can't do concerts, you can't expose yourself musically to the people that you need to right now. So reaching out one-on-one, -on -one, small groups and online performances hopefully will help. Mm. So I guess they're but, doing the same thing in the States as well. Sorry. Yeah, but, but they are starting a music concerts in America, aren't they, Harvey? Yeah, they're opening concerts. With, I went to like two shows last week and I think it's getting less and less COVID here and we're starting to see more people gathering. You know, we're going to have the, the Grammy show January 31st, which we're keeping our fingers crossed that there's no new COVID variants. But we are absolutely starting to have a lot more shows here in the States. Mm, that's good to hear. All right, as um, this is one last question, and I think this is all for all the Indonesian artists out there, because um, you know uh, when when else do I have the time to ask this? Yes. <laughs> um, since you are the CEO of the Recording Academy, and by the way, uh, if you guys don't know what the Recording Academy is, it's basically the organization that holds the Grammy Awards. Now. How can an Indonesian artist make it and nominate it in the Grammys or even win it? Well, first thing I would suggest is you have to release your music in the U.S. So if an Indonesian artist wants to be eligible for a Grammy, the music has to be uh, available here on the streaming platforms in the U.S. Uh, and after that, any you know, professional music person could submit their music, whether that's through a label or through a member or through uh, you know, members of their team, uh, submit the music for consideration, then it goes through the process and the voters vote on it and hopefully you get a lot of votes and hopefully you win. But it's a pretty straightforward process as long as you're releasing music in the US. Mm. Mm. Okay. There, there is I don't no think a lot of artists in Indonesia knows that. So that's- Yeah, that's, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. So there is no um, you know, nomination for best foreign language music. Do they still have it, Harvey? There is a foreign language music, but it has to be released in the US. Mm. Oh, That's still. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Dira, yeah. Do you think Dira will have a chance? Everybody will have a chance, right, yeah. Harvey? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody. She will have a chance. <laughs> She's releasing in the US. So Release it in the US. <laughs> Release <laughs> back in time in the US, all right? Okay, cool. So thank you so much, Harvey. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dira. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Harvey. It's, uh, it's a very Daniel, precious time. A lot of fun. Thank you for having me. And hopefully... I'll see you soon in Indonesia. Let's go. That's it. That's it. And also, a good luck for the 64th annual Grammy Awards in January. We're mm. excited much. for all the nominees. Mm. Hopefully, in the future, there will be more Indonesian names. And That's it. In the nominations. <laughs> That's great. I yeah. would love it. 
Yeah, they were great. Thank you Thank again, you. Harvey. I'll see you. Have a great one. Bye. Stay safe. Take care, Harvey. Bye. Bye. Bye.